What is good, you guys? Welcome back to Mullet Math, okay? Before we dive into some radians and some degrees, I just wanna show you guys my kitten real quick. Cause she is cute. And when I say cute, I mean, come on. Say hi. Say hi. I mean, look at this. Her name is Olive. But she just pumps me up to get some math going, okay? She is the cutest. Say hi, Olive. Say hi. Well, she's feeling a little shy, but Olive. Can you kiss? <laughs> Rejected. All right, well, let's get into some math, baby. Alrighty guys, hey, welcome back to Mullet Math. Um, let's dive on into some radians and degrees, okay? Um, I'm gonna jump into the theory here um, in just a second, but if you haven't seen the unit circle yet, um, let's kind of peek and talk about what the unit circle is. If you have already been introduced to the unit circle, I'd recommend skipping through um, just till we get to theory. But if you haven't, let's kind of get ourselves familiar with the unit circle and understand what's actually going on here um, inside the unit circle. So the definition of the unit circle is that it has a radius um, of one. So here we have our X axis, right? And right here we have our Y axis, right? So the coordinates for our X axis, if we're centered at zero, zero, right? It should make sense that our X value is one, right? Radius one and our Y value is zero, okay? And if we come up on the Y axis here, if we're centered at zero, zero, again, you come up here, it makes sense that our X value is zero and our Y value is one, right? Because we're radius is, our radius, excuse me, is one. And that's what we're using here uh, for the unit circle. That's its definition. So what we have here, um, is a whole bunch of measurements in degrees, right? I'm sure you guys are familiar with degrees, but one thing that's new to a lot of people when you get to the unit circle, and a lot of people kind of get confused and or um, aggravated or mad because <laughs> they have to start using another measurement of um, angles is radians here, okay? So at 30 degrees um, in rads that we call for short for radians, we have pi over six. Um, at 45 degrees, we have pi over four. And at 60 degrees, we have pi over three and so on, right? But the easiest way to remember all of this is looking at the zeros and then at where we have 90 degrees, 180, 270 and zero, right? That's gonna be the easiest way to remember what we have at pi here. So the way that I like to remember it is at zero degrees, we obviously have an angle or radian of zero, right? Um, if we get to 90 degrees, that's just pi over two, okay? So commit that to memory. And then when we get over here to 180 degrees, right? We're a straight line. We're coming all the way over here, 180 degrees. We have a value of pi for our radians, okay? That's just part of the theory, um, part of what we're told. We can prove that later. Um, but like I said, just get yourself familiar with this uh, unit circle. Like I said, biggest key points, radius of one. Um, at 180 degrees, it is pi radians. And if we take the whole circle together, I will uh, kind of expand on this. If we take the whole circle together here, um, it is gonna be two pi radians, okay? So when you meet back, when you get 360 degrees and you get to here, you have two pi radians, okay? So with that being said, let's kind of move over into our theory here. We're gonna just kind of fill out this chart of what we have in degrees and what that would be in radians, okay? We kind of went over this um, a little bit ago, but for zero degrees, um, we have obviously zero radians, okay? You come over here to the unit circle, we look at 30 degrees. We have pi over six, okay? At 45 degrees, we have pi over four, okay? 60 degrees, pi over three, at 90 degrees, pi over 2. And 180 degrees, it's just pi, okay? And I know that seems pretty simple and straightforward when you have the unit circle in front of you, but if on a test or uh, in your class, you're not given um, these radians or the values of them, um, remember, if we cover these up, right, and we know the degrees, we know 30, 45, and 60. Well, if we know 180 is pi, right, and we split that in half, it's just going to be pi over 2. So at 90 degrees, we're going to have pi over 2. If we split it up into thirds, we're going to have 60, 120, and 180. So we would have pi over 3, right? We're just dividing this by 3, okay? That's kind of how I like to think about it. Um, and then continuing on, just one more example. If we have pi over 4, 45 degrees, well, it takes... 45, 90, 135, 180, four of those to get to 180 degrees. So it's just gonna be pi divided by four, okay, at 45 degrees. That's the way I like to think about it. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, but I just kinda wanted to skim over that uh, real quick 
and just kind of give us a table and some set values um, of what we know, at least theoretically. We haven't proven yet, but that's what we're kind of given. Alrighty, guys. Um, moving on to conversions here. If we have a angle, uh, theta is what we typically use. If you haven't seen this symbol, that's what it is. It's called theta. It's in the Greek alphabet. But that always, not always, but typically is going to be used for an angle measurement in math. Okay, so get familiar with that theta symbol. But let's say we have a theta or an angle given in radians and we want to go to degrees. Okay, so we're just going to take that theta in radians and multiply it by 180 divided by pi. Okay, that's just a known formula that I'm giving you here. And then we hop down here. If you have an angle or a theta given in degrees and we want to switch to radians, you're going to take that angle and multiply it by pi over 180. Okay, so just keep those um, equations there in mind as we move forward. And we're going to get some practice with that later, but just keep those in mind. Okay, um, a lot of you guys uh, are kind of asking yourself, I know I asked myself when I went through this originally, why do we use radians? I mean, why? I mean, degrees are easy, right? You learn those even through elementary school. Why don't we just stick to those dang things? Well, the reason that radians are useful in math is number one, uh, obviously there's a lot of reasons, but the two main reasons that I'm gonna point out here um, that I'm gonna try to convince you of to use radians in the future is that if you take derivatives, right? If you guys go to Calc 1, uh, in the first couple weeks, you're gonna start doing derivatives, okay? And when we start doing derivatives and we have sine and cosine functions, um, you're going to take the derivative of a sine function, you're going to get a cosine function out, okay? That's just the derivative of sine, okay? But if we use degrees, up here we're using radians while we're doing these derivatives. If we use degrees, well, once you take the derivative of that sine or cosine function, it's going to pop out cosine over here because we're taking derivative of sine it's going to pop out cosine but then we're also multiplying it by pi over 180 because this degrees has a value here versus the radians just kind of being in, in math more simple okay i'm not going to get too deep into that i just want you guys to know that it is helpful later on when we're doing more complicated math that it is going to make play a key difference and you're going to have less numbers and it's going to be less jumble okay so moving on to reason number two, um, we have this fancy equation. Hopefully you've seen it before. If not, I'm going to kind of go over it, but it is arc length. Okay. And we signify arc length with an S. So we're going to say S arc length equals the radius of a circle R times theta. And this theta is angle in radians. Okay. So this equation only works. And I repeat, be, be cautious only works when we have radians. That's another reason we like to use it because it's simple, okay? So here we have a circle, radius r, we have our theta, and we can use this to find the any arc length on the circle if and only if that theta is given in radians, okay? And one thing I wanna point out too here in your calculator, um, if you go to mode, it has here uh, in TI-84 and 83s, a difference between radian and degrees. So when you're typing stuff into your calculator here, if you're using degrees while you're doing sine, cosine, tangent, um, all that kind of stuff, it will pop out the answers in degrees. Okay, does that make sense? So if you're doing, let's say, cosine of five or whatever the number is or whatever the angle is, it is going to pop out something in degrees. That's gonna be your answer. However, you can also choose radian mode and the same goes for that. If you took the inverse of some value and you want to pop out an angle in degrees, it will pop it out in radians. So be very careful when you're using your calculator here not to mix up degrees and radians and make sure that you you press this mode button here to double check which mode it's in. Okay, so I'm just going to exit out of there. But moving back down here, guys, um, degrees are useful in real life. I will say in the real world, I use degrees a lot more than I do radians. However, be careful because as you move on in math, and if you keep moving on in math, you want to know radians. Okay. Alrighty, guys. Moving on to number two here, um, the conceptual kind of aspect um, that I want to dive into you guys with. So the conceptual aspect of knowing radians and degrees is knowing the relationship between the two, right? Earlier, we had this unit circle, which I will bring back in here, and we said that 180 degrees equals pi, right? Okay, so I wrote that here, 180 degrees equals pi radians, right? Well, we can rewrite that because we know the value of pi, right? That's kind of given, we all know that. It's 180 degrees equals 3.1415 approximately, right? 
uh, radians. So we're saying that this is true. But we can take this a step further and we can say, well, 180 degrees, if we want to know what one radian is, okay, we can divide that by pi, 3.1415, okay, and we're just going to rewrite this as one radian equals approximately 57.3 degrees. So I'm going to try to kind of draw this out. Let's say that's 57.3. That was a bad, bad example because these are going to look off, but let's say we're doing each one of these is 57.3, okay. These are all 57.3, so 57.3, 57.3, okay, and 57.3. Well, we have this little chunk left over, right? Because we have three radians here, okay? This is one radian, this is one radian, and that's one radian. But we have this little chunk over here um, that we should know the value, right? Because if we have three radians, we need to have an extra 0.1415. So we should know that right here, we, we don't actually know this angle measurement, okay? But we do know that out here, the actual radian value of it is 0.1415, okay? So what we're saying here is all of this together, so one, two, three, 0.1415 radians equals this 180 degrees, okay? so. You can kind of add this up and figure out what the remaining is. Um, but like I said, it's just really important to say, okay, well, we understand that this whole 3.1415 radians is pi, right, is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so drill that into your brain and kind of understand it. Um, well, let's move down here to another concept. How do pi and arc length kind of relate? And I just want to go through kind of a quick proof to prove to you guys what we have here, okay? So we all know we've been introduced to the circumference of a circle. Okay, that's equal to pi d. But we can rewrite that, right? Because we know diameter is just 2 times the radius. Okay, so we can write th rewrite this as 2 pi r, where r equals the radius. Okay. But we can also come down here to our arc length equation that I gave you guys earlier. So arc length s equals radius times theta. Well, for the unit circle, which we talked about, the radius equals one, okay, that's just gonna be one right here. And our theta, or our angle, for 360 degrees, the total arc length around the circle is two pi. So hopefully you see where I'm going with this, right? Because if we say, therefore, the circumference equals the total arc length of the circle, right? We're going all the way around the unit circle. Well, we can also prove that that's equal to the circumference, right? Because we said circumference up here, two pi r, is equal to the total arc length around a circle, which is r times theta. That's this total arc length, right? So we can just put the values in for our unit circle, and we have 2 pi times 1 equals 1 times 2 pi, okay? And that checks out, right? We can cancel everything, and it all makes sense. It's That is true. That's a true statement. So we just proved that the unit circle's total arc length, s, okay, all the way around the circle, is equal to its circumference. And I know that's pretty simple, it's a pretty easy thing to do, but it does show us that this relationship does work for the unit circle and any other circle in that case, okay, with a different radius because we have this variable that relates them, right? Okay, move on to number three, um, some solving together, okay? So I gave you that formula earlier, um, for example, number one here. We want to convert 26 degrees to radians. So hopefully you guys still have sheet number one here and took some notes. And... We have a angle, theta, given in degrees, and we want to convert that to radian. So we're just going to take that theta and multiply it by pi over 180, okay? So we're going to take 26 degrees okay, times pi over 180, and we're just going to... Alrighty, so we're going to take 26 degrees times pi by 180, okay? And that's just going to give us 0 0.454 radians. Okay, so that would be our answer on that one. Pretty simple, pretty easy, right? We're just taking degrees times pi over 180, and we get our uh, angle or value here of 0 0.454 radians, all right? Well, let's do the same thing, except in reverse here. We're doing, we're gonna convert from radians to degrees, okay? So it's just gonna be the exact opposite of what we did here. We're just gonna take our radian value, so two pi divided by three, okay? We're given that, we're gonna multiply that by our equation that we are given, 180 over pi this time, 
We're just doing the exact reversal of what we did earlier, okay? So we're just gonna take two times pi divided by three, okay? That's our first part here. And we're gonna take that answer and we're gonna multiply that by 180 divided by pi. And that is going to equal 120 degrees. And you know what? We can actually check that. We come back here to the unit circle and we just said that we were given two pi over three, right? That was our value given. Well, we just typed that into the calculator, got 120 degrees. So we can check that off and we are pretty confident with that answer, okay? So moving on to example number three here. Let's say we want, want to find arc length this time, okay? So arc length, we are right here. I'm just gonna write this equation out, right? S equals R times theta. We were given that, okay? Find the arc length when theta equals 60. So we know theta equals 60 degrees. I just like write, I just like writing out what we know, all right? What's fact, what's given in the problem. And for a circle with diameter eight, okay? So D equals eight. Well, we know from earlier, we kind of talked about it. Diameter is just two radius. So we can say, we can rewrite this as diameter eight equals two times the radius, okay? So if we want to simplify this, let's divide each side by two to get the radius by itself. So four equals R, okay? That's what we just found. So the radius of this circle is four. And that's going to help us out because now we want to find this arc length, right? So S equals R times theta. But remember, this equation is only true. Let's write this out. Only true if theta is in radians, right? In radians. So we have to convert this first. Okay, so let's do that real quick. So kind of similar to what we did up here, right? We have degrees to radians. So we're just going to multiply this 60 degrees by pi over 180. Okay, so we're going to come down here and do 60 degrees times pi over 180. Okay, let's do that on the calculator. Calculator, excuse me. Pi divided by 180. And we are gonna get 1.047 radians, okay? And now, let's box that in to keep it consistent. And now we can finally solve for our original equation here, which is arc length, right? That's what we're trying to do. So our arc length, S, equals our radius, right? Four times theta, our angle given in radians, which is 1.047. And we arrive at our answer. So let's do that times four. And we get 4.18. I'm just going to round up here, right? 489 um, units, right? Whatever units we used here, whatever this diameter was, we didn't have units here, but we know that that is our answer. 4.18. Eight, nine. Okay. Hopefully you guys followed on that. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. We just had to kind of do two steps before we arrived at our answer. But you know what? In real life, you got to do a lot more steps, right? So this is good practice for the real world. Alrighty. So a circular cow pen has a radius of 120 feet. I'm just going to come down right now. And I'm going to write radius equals 120 feet. I like writing this out as we are kind of given it. Okay. So I'm going to underline that of 120 feet. The farmer that built the fence would like to add electrical fence near a pond. Okay, we got a pond drawn already down here to deter alligators from getting inside. I'm assuming he's in Florida or somewhere like that where you might have alligators, crocodiles, whatever you got, right? So he measures the angle of the fence that needs electrical fencing to be 32 degrees, okay? So I can already drew that here. We have some electrical fencing out here near the pond, right? We don't want alligators getting in and messing with our cows. So we have this angle here that we want to add electrical fence to. And we have this theta that we're given here at 32 degrees. Okay. So we're just going to say theta equals 32 degrees. Okay. From the center of the pen. So what we really want here is the last sentence, find the length of the electrical fence the farmer needs. Okay. Well, this should kind of hint at something we just did, right? We know arc length is probably what we want because that's going to be the arc length of the circle. That's the length of the electrical fence we want for a circular fence, right? Or a circular pen, excuse me. So we know that only this segment of fencing out here is what we're looking for. And that is the arc length, right? That is what we said. So our arc length formula is S equals R times theta. But again, guys, we have a theta 
given in degrees here, but it always has to be in radians. I really want to point that out, okay? So let's convert this theta real quick. We have 32 degrees times, and to get from degrees to radians, we're going to go pi over 180, right? So let's hop over here, 32 times pi divided by 180. That's going to be 0 0.5585 radians, okay? Hopefully you guys are following with that. So we just converted degrees to radians, perfect. And I think right here, we have our radius, right? We have our theta, that gives us our arc length. So S equals the radius of 120 feet. Okay, we're gonna keep the units in there to keep it clear, times 0 0.5585 radians, okay? And that is gonna be simple. We just come over here in our calculator, type in 120 feet times 0 0.0 or excuse me, 0 0.5585, and we have 67.02 feet of fence, okay? Alrighty, guys, so what did we just do? We just found the arc length right here of the total amount of fencing that the farmer would want to keep the alligators out of the pond, right? So hopefully you guys kind of see the relationship between arc length, radians, degrees, um, and hopefully the practice problems we went through together um, correlate well with what you guys are learning. But hey, if this was useful, um, please like, subscribe, follow, send to a friend if it was um, useful for your class. Um, drop a comment below of other videos or other examples, maybe some problems that you'd like to see me solve. Um, I'd love to come on here and kind of do them with you. Um, but yeah, hey guys, um, thanks for sticking around. And I will be coming out with another video here soon um, about right triangle trigonometry. So hopefully, like I said, that correlates well with what you guys are doing in class, and I will see you next time. Thanks.